So hi everyone, my name is Ryan Rennie. I'm here with Greenwich House Pottery doing a demonstration on slab building, um, how to build a cylinder form, and we'll also go into some different ways to alter that form such as darting. So in the previous video, I stretched out some slabs on this picnic bench and now I'll get into the construction. So I'm just going to cut out the bottom for a cylindrical form, and this is for a watering can. Uh, I don't really measure a lot of the times for pieces like this. I'm kind of eyeballing things. So I've got a bottom, and I'm going to cut down a nice enough piece that I can do the full cylinder with. Again, I'm just stretching the slab kind of as I go to get the right size. Pulling off some chunks from the table there. And then I'll see if this fits. The bottom that I made, eh, looks like it's a little bit too small. That's okay because I'll just stretch it out a little bit. So if you didn't see the previous video, take a look at that where I go into a little more detail on stretching, but just those couple throws down will really change the length of that slab by a couple inches and it should fit the bottom now. Just scoring here with a fork. I don't really use much water and you probably don't even need to score all the time when the clay is this wet. I really do more scoring and more water when I'm working with leather hard clay. Um, but because this is the bottom, sometimes you can get cracks there. I will do some scoring, but really I rely mostly on compressing it and really smushing it together. And that's how I know it's gonna it's not going to pop off or come apart. So um, yeah, I'm kind of awkwardly getting this thing together. I'm going to try and get it pushed down on that bottom slab. When you're slab building a cylinder, I would always put the slab on top of the bottom and don't wrap it around the bottom. I've seen people do that. It's kind of awkward that way. I always want the slab longer than what I need because then I can cut down here. So what I'll do now is I'll just cut down through the center of all of these overlapping scraps. And when I cut down at a 45 degree angle, I'll be left with a nice little lap that can go over and be compressed. So you're not measuring, right? You're not measuring to get the exact slab to fit perfect and then cutting down just make it longer overlap cut through and then you can remove the scraps there and what you're left with is something that should fit together a little bit nicer i always want to bevel my slabs one on top of the other instead of end to end like a butt joint this is a pretty subtle bevel but it helps So I'm really relying on compressing that and smoothing it over. But in this case, I'm really, I'm not trying to completely smooth over that seam. But I do want to kind of make sure it's together. Anytime I attach something, I always like to wiggle it together. Instead of just kind of putting it, I kind of give it a little wiggle, push it together.
And what I'm doing here is my inside hand is going around and compressing that wall of the cylinder down into the bottom. And I want to talk about some techniques now that we can use to alter the cylinder. So this is called darting. And this comes from um, basically sewing techniques like tailoring and, and, and seamstress uh, work. So like if you wanted to change the size of a shirt or a dress, change the shape of it, you would use techniques like this where you're removing some material, adding some here and there. Um, yeah, take a look. What I'm doing now is I'm putting a dart down here where I'm gonna remove part of this bottom. And this is a way to give you uh, a little bit of lift on the bottom of your piece. So right now it's more of this kind of clumsy cylinder. I'll remove that material, push the bottom up, and then I'll have a uh, something a little bit more interesting to give the piece a little bit of lift up off the table. So I'll just remove that piece first. Do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm just pushing that bottom up. And I'm just using the extra clay that was left around the base to kind of be smoothed up, curled up around the top of that cylinder, the bottom of that cylinder. Always good to think about how your piece meets the table. So just with that little move, we can really dramatically change the way that this thing sits. I've got some cracks here, but that's okay. I'll can maybe leave those. I think a lot of this type of building, it, it starts to become about the connections or about the seams and, and kind of letting those things be revealed. Just true up the top there. Compress your rim if you notice any weak points. I'll deal with most of that later. So that was a dart to change uh, sort of the bottom and how it meets the table. And this is a, a, a type of darting where we can change kind of the whole volume of that cylinder and really corset it in and give this piece uh, something of a waist. So I'll start by making a little incision and removing some material around that incision and then I'll rejoin basically. And it's exactly like a corset. Push those together. I didn't even score on this one. The clay's so wet. I'm just going to really rely on smushing it together, kind of delicately smoothing it out, or more so smushing because I'm really leaving the seam on all of these connections. Stay over there. me uh, talking to my camera help. You can see it better now on this side with the light. 
really dramatically changes that form. I'm using a, a sculpture clay. It's a little intense for what I'm doing here, but it'll do just fine. As you can see that really uh, changed that shape, put that angle in there. Try and keep my scraps together when I can, keep them from drying out. Got that little guy. So that was an intro to just building a cylinder, darting out uh, a piece with slabs. And the next video, I'll go into how to make a spout.